This program brought to you in part by the Erica Lewis Endowment Fund. CCSD is the fifth largest school district in the nation, with student success as its number one goal. Join us as we meet student go-getters and goal setters and discover their skills, talents, and drive. Plus, meet the incredible staff who are helping students shine. It's all here in Student Spotlight. Hello and welcome to Student Spotlight. I'm Melinda Malone. My co-host Mauricio Marin has the day off. There's a lot to share with you in the next half hour. We'll take you inside Cadwallader Middle School where wings hang in the hallways to honor those lost on 1 October. Why this project has special significance here and how students hope to help others. Then, Superintendent Dr. Jesus Jara sits down with three of the district's more than 60 National Merit Scholarship semifinalists. Trust us, you'll be impressed. And meet a young author. Did we mention she's award-winning? How the Vegas PBS Kids Writers Contest, presented by Janice Allen, is inspiring students like Dylan, and why for this winner, the contest is a family affair. But we begin by shining the spotlight on an exceptional senior from ATEC High School who hasn't let housing insecurity stop her dreams. She's a science whiz who hopes to attend college on scholarship and one day become a surgeon. My name's Angel Ndivisi and I'm a senior at ATEC. I find science interesting. I think um, it's really just the idea of being able to create something that can really be helpful to humanity. For example, I was um, a part of the Stanford Cardiothoracic Surgery Internship Program where my team and I designed a, a novel surgical device to help with um, coronary plaque buildup. It's things like these that just fuel my passion for science. I want other kids to know that hard work does pay off and I want them to know that they shouldn't give up on their education because to me that's the way out. Additionally, there are a lot of resources out there like Title I Hope that will work with you closely like they did with me and my family. We've been working with them for a few years and specifically in, in her last year, she's a senior now. And we just saw that there were some needs that um, we would be able to help with by just making a phone call or sending a letter or connecting to resources or connecting her with a scholarship counselor. I think COVID and the pandemic has really been difficult for a lot of people. And also another challenge that I've also been facing is um, us not really having a stable living uh, living accommodation at this particular moment. And so um, I think one of the biggest things that's been able to drive me and help me overcome that is just my strong family support system and just how tenacious of a person I am. She's resilient. <laughs> I mean, all of the challenges that they've had over the years, um, she continues to excel in every area. I see big things for her. I want to get into Brown PLME program, which is an amazing opportunity where I'm able to go directly to medical school after my four years at Brown. I really want to become a cardiothoracic surgeon. So I see myself becoming one and being able to create solutions in real time for my community. Thank you, Angel, for sharing your story. We're so proud of you. Each year, about 13,000 CCSD students are helped by Title I HOPE. You can learn more at ccsd.net. And speaking of exceptional students, 62 CCSD high school students are semifinalists in the 2022 National Merit Scholarship Program. How special is this honor? Semifinalists represent less than 1% of U.S. high school seniors, and they will compete for National Merit Scholarships worth nearly $30 million. Superintendent Jara caught up with three semifinalists from Clark High School here in the Vegas PBS studios to learn more about their achievements. First of all, let's just have you introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about your favorite area of study. I'm Savannah and I really enjoy math. I'm looking at majoring in biomedical engineering. Uh, hello guys, my name is Philip and uh, something I'm interested in majoring in is uh, poli-sci, and I'm interested in social studies, so 
And I'm Megano, but I go by Meg, and I'm a science enthusiast, so I like biology, psychology, and anatomy and physiology, and I'm planning on pursuing neuroscience as my major in college. Excellent. Well, you know, top talent. Um, so proud of all of you, and, and really uh, thank you for being here. So Savannah, the past two school years have been untraditional due to the pandemic. What has helped you keep your grades up, and what did you learn from the past few years? I think that a lot of my um, drive and determination has helped to keep my grades up, but also a lot of outside support from my friends and family. I think overall, just finding my happy place and working through it. Excellent. So, Philip, so how do you think this honor um, will impact your future plans for college and or career? So I think getting this honor will be able to like distinguish me apart from like the other 99% of students across the country. And I think that this honor will allow colleges to be more interested and uh, give me more money potentially. And with student debt being the highest it has ever been in like mm -hmm. the nation, I think it's important that like I can get every single dollar possible. And like with getting this uh, scholarship, it'll help me get more opportunities to like go to different colleges potentially. and. Uh, with that said, getting those connections and those resources from those colleges will help me be prepared to either become a lawyer or a businessman, which is what I want to do in the future. So did I hear you um, say the top 1%? So you guys are right here, the three of you, in the top 1% in student achievement, not in Clark County School District, not in Clark County, not in Nevada, in the country? Is that That's what correct. I'm hearing? Yeah. So phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal work from you. Your parents must be so proud, and of course your teachers. So that I'm, I'm just so grateful um, to be here with you as you are the top 1%. But Meg, what have you learned about yourself by participating in this scholarship competition? So through participating in National Merit, I learned the importance of a grit mindset. So because I was able to spend a lot of time 100% of my effort on studying for the standardized test. It's obviously shown through my achievement here today, but it's also taught me personally how much pride and self-respect I have for myself. And I started applying that grit mindset of hard work and perseverance in other aspects of my life. And it just made me feel a lot more accomplished with everything that I was doing. So that was something that I'm grateful for learning through National Merit. Uh, what advice would you give other students um, that are going to be watching this um, to, to really achieve this goal? Meg, we'll start with you, Philip, and then we'll come this way. So my number one advice is to not be afraid of failure. I think because of so much pressure that we put on ourselves and external pressure as well that we tend to lose track of how much we can actually accomplish. And so if we learn that it's okay to make mistakes, but it's how we overcome these obstacles and how we learn from those mistakes. That's what's going to make you successful, not just for this competition, but in life. So I would say, don't be afraid to fail. Perfect. Um, a tip I would give to students is that it's okay to take a break because like with all the studying and all the practice tests and questions that you do, your mind will eventually get tired. And just like working out, you need time to, your muscles need time to recover so you can do the next exercise. And the brain is also a muscle, right? So you need time for it to recover and recuperate before doing more questions and practice tests. So I think it's okay for people to take a break and they don't have to consume all the time 24 seven to just like studying for the PISA and like be able to like balance your life, hang out with friends, talk with like your family Perfect. and stuff like that. Perfect, Savannah, wrap us up. I would say just believe in yourself. I think it's really important to look and see all the work you've done in preparation. So for the PSAT, all the practice problems. And then on the actual test day, just remember what you prepared for and believe in your ability to do it. Excellent. So you heard from the top 1% in America. Don't, for, don't, don't worry about failure. Uh, rest and believe in yourself. Again, congratulations for being here. And I wish you all the continued success as you graduate and you go make us all proud. Thank you again. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Jara. At the end of the program, we'll list all of CCSD's National Merit Scholarship semifinalists, as they all deserve the spotlight. Now let's kick it over to K.O. Knutson Academy of the Arts for our Student Spotlight News Break. Hi, I'm Margo Beatty. And I'm Riley Henry from K.O. Knutson Academy of the Arts with the television crew. And we're here with your first Student Spotlight News Break. 
Did you know National School Lunch Week is in October? This year's theme was Wild About School Lunch. As part of the special week, district leaders had a big announcement. The community eligibility provision is expanding district-wide. That means the district will offer meals at no charge to all CCSD students throughout the 2024-2025 school year. Week of Respect is also celebrated in October. CCSD's Week of Respect theme is being upstanders, schools across the valley, including ours, shared photos to social media using the hashtag CCSDGetYourBlueOn to recognize the special week. That's it for now, but remember to stay in the know. We'll explain that later. These guys will be back to you with more news later in the show. Now back to you, Melinda. Thank you, Margo and Riley. Now to Cadwallader Middle School, where angel wings hang in the hallways to honor the 58 lives lost on 1 October. Each year, the school's advanced art students design a set of angel wings for each person who died in the tragedy. The Angel Wings project was started by one of the teachers at the school who was there that night and survived. So these wings I created for James Sonny Melton. So the reason why I created Sonny's wings like that was because I found out that he actually died protecting his wife and he basically put down his life to protect another. And so that's also why I did the two hearts in it so you could see not only Sonny since he was an ER nurse and, and that's why I actually used my Nana's old scrubs for the inside of it and then I did the feathers for like the softness. Like it was wrapped around him like in a way, since he was a religious man, it was like God was protecting him and his wife. I made wings for Charles Hartfield. I made those for him because he was a dad. My dad worked with him and was friends. I wasn't really sure what shape, and I wanted a more simple shape because one side's more of a memorial and one side's kind of more of a symbolize of what he did. I picked Carrie Barnett and I chose her because she seemed like a really nice person. When I uh, read about her, pretty much everyone talked about her liking hummingbirds because I think it said that they reminded her of her grandparents that passed away. She had a lot of family. She seemed like a really good person. I made my wings to represent Michelle Vo, one of the people there. Uh, I wanted to go with a simple angel wing look, but I wanted to add a personal touch. So when she died, her family gave out ribbons that I decided it would be a good idea to attach them to sort of relate them to her. I'm a survivor of that evening. My husband and I both went to listen to a beautiful night of music and um, ended up probably experiencing something, the most horrific thing I've ever experienced in my life. This makes my heart so full when I enter this hallway and when I can look at each one of these angels and I know about each one of these angels and I know the, the people, I know of the people that they've left behind and this will help them continue to heal like it's help, helping me to heal. It's important not to forget, forget these, um, these names and most of all that, you know, these, these names still have family attached to them. And I want my kids to know how proud I am of them for working so hard, being committed to this project and seeing it through. It meant a lot. It was definitely a challenge because it took a lot of time, but I knew I was doing it for the right purpose. And it felt like an honor almost. It was really good to be able to do these for them and just show that they're still loved and like cared about and like show their families that they're not forgotten. I definitely think this project is a good thing to help the families move on, to help them grieve. I want whoever sees these wings or whoever comes and sees them to feel as if the people are still here and that they are still looking down at us and protecting us in a way and as long as we just keep a positive mindset and we just remember them and know that they're still in our hearts that everything will be okay. The Angel Wings Project helps raise funds to support survivors. 
This year's donations will be split between the 55 Children Left Behind Scholarship Fund as well as the Healing Garden. Students, staff, and the community are also encouraged to sign a pledge to spread kindness. Three Nevada schools were named 2021 National Blue Ribbon Schools, and two of the schools are in the Clark County School District. The honor comes from the U.S. Department of Education, and it is prestigious as only 325 schools nationwide earn the distinction each year. The superintendent invited the principals from Charlotte Hill Elementary and Lamping Elementary into the Vegas PBS studios to learn more about this honor. I am joined by the principals of CCSD's two National Blue Ribbon Schools, Principal Jennifer Reynolds from Charlotte Hill Elementary School and Principal Robert Solomon from Lamping Elementary School. First, congratulations, both of you, for your achievement in your school and your campuses as you have been recognized as an exemplary achievement gap closing category by the National Blue Ribbon. So congratulations to your entire staff. So how have you, Robert, I'll start with you. How have you worked to close the achievement gap in your campus? You know, it's, it's amazing when we look at the amazing things that our our staff has been doing over the past several years, um, but in particular when you look at an equity lens and we look at what they're doing to ensure that all kids are having the right tools to be successful, um, our, our staff has really done a, a fabulous job in collaborating and looking at, okay, specific populations of kids who need to have the uh, materials and tools and instruction to, to make gains and, and demonstrate growth. Uh, Jennifer? So our first priority was quality tier one instruction, ensuring that every student is receiving the best instruction they possibly can receive. And then looking at the whole child, ensuring that every need is being met. And then when we see that they need something additional besides tier one instruction, it's being strategic and getting the supports to each child. So what I love is that, you know, you're accelerating the momentum for children, right, in the high end, but then also you're providing the resources and support for your teachers uh, to close that achievement gap. So it's so a really great work and, and kudos to, to, to you and your staff. Um, so Jennifer, what are you most proud of when it comes to your campus? I mean, I called you, I think it was a couple weeks ago, and you just couldn't keep raving about your school. But you know, why don't you just tell us all about what you're excited and, and what makes your school special? So when you come to Charlotte Hill, you can tell that it's a family atmosphere, that every student is our students, that we work together. We like to you know, make sure that every student, from the minute they walk in, they feel special. We recognize them, and we all know every child and that if there's a need, no matter what grade level, whoever's available on staff is gonna support that child. And that, you know, we, we like to collaborate in the grade levels and then, you know, within and then vertical collaboration, but knowing our children and ensuring that we support them no matter what. Excellent, thank you. So Robert, I, I remember walking onto your campus and I'm, and I'm, there's a student there that's just kind of become my special kid. Every time I, I think about um, your school at Lamping Elementary, I think about what he said to me as I'm walking in. He goes, and I introduce myself, he goes, you're going to love it here. I mean, he tells me, and then I walk into the campus, at, and it was so, such a happy place, um, which is what, you know, what I'm hearing. So what, what are you most excited about and, and really proud of your accomplishments at Lamping Elementary? Well, I think, like you said, when you walk on our campus, the feel and the vibe and, and the climate within the school that they enjoy being there. Our students and our staff really enjoy the campus, which really um, speaks to uh, the collaboration, the camaraderie, and the pride that they're, they're in a school that they love. Um, and I think that our teachers, particularly through the pandemic, have had to work really hard to ensure that, you know, how are we meeting those kids' emotional needs? How are we getting them to feel connected to the school? Um, and so having everyone back in person, we're able to see again um, what we value so much when we come together as a community. So uh, thank you. Um, and, and really also what I'm hearing is, you know, the, celeb the happiness, the happy place, but the rigor. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. just, you know, a party, right? I mean, it's right. You're, you're pushing the academic limits, which I really appreciate that. So, so Jennifer, I'll come back here. So what does it mean uh, to your school community, to your staff, to be nationally recognized? I mean, only three in the state of Nevada. Um, I think on, you know, a little bit over 300 across the country. What does that mean and how did you celebrate? 
So it just means that you know all the work we've been put in to our children to ensure their academic success that you know people are recognizing that that you know the beginning of their education is at elementary school we need to be there for them we set the tone for college and career readiness and that we're doing it we're doing it every day and the kids you know are happy but they're achieving and every kid can achieve at a high level so it's just the recognition it's an honor um, we haven't celebrated yet okay. um, you know we're still you know still at it still at it, it. it makes you makes you special <laughs> makes your school special Robert um, you know I, I think that um, we are honored to be recognized um, when there are so many great things going on in our district and in our schools. So many of our leaders and educators are doing so many great things. And when we've had so, so many challenges to overcome as educators and to receive the recognition for the hard work that they've done in, in helping students achieve and, and engage in school, um, it, it's, it's, it's a wonderful celebration. Um, and we're working on teaching the students what exactly did, makes us special to get this kind of recognition so they have an understanding. And we're gonna, we're gonna have a week of celebration in the month of November after we go and get our recognition from DC to, to really let the kids and, and the staff and the community enjoy and, and, and feel the, the wonder of the celebration. Well, thank you for being here. I mean, I'm just so excited. There's great things happening in the Clark County School District in spite of what you hear out there. I mean, you guys are just a model of so many things and celebrating your teachers, your staff, your community. So congratulations, we really do appreciate you. I know I do, the board does as well. Appreciate all your hard work, your commitment to our children. So congratulations again and thank you for continuing to make CCSD the number one choice for our kids. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jara, and congratulations again to Hill and Lamping Elementary Schools. Now let's send it back to K.O. Knutson Academy of the Arts for another news break. Hi, I'm Chris Bersiaga. And I'm Ivy Fearborn, reporting to you from our television studio. And we're here with your second news break. Television production is just one of the many majors we have here at K.O. Knutson Academy of the Arts. Some of the other majors we have here at K.O. are theater, dance, band, orchestra, mariachi, visual arts, graphic design, choir, and ballet folk Rico. A little more on TV production. We produce a 100% student-run news broadcast named In the Know. We also have two 100% student-produced film festivals every year. We'll send it back to the studio. Thank you for visiting K.O. Knutson. Thank you, Ivy and Chris. Nearly 700 students from all over Southern Nevada wrote and illustrated original stories and then entered those stories into the 2021 Vegas PBS Kids Writers Contest presented by Janice Allen. We caught up with the fifth grade first place winner and her family too. I like how you take like just an idea and you turn it into a whole story. And I also like the writing and all the expressions you can put into it. It's been tradition for 10 years. Every year they start thinking about their next book. Once, the, once that book has been turned in, they start thinking, what are we going to do next year? So it's been very exciting. My name is Blake and my little sister is Dylan. My dad told me that there was a writer's contest and he thought that I should enter. And uh, I loved writing at the time. I did this when I was in first grade. So I jumped at the opportunity and I ended up winning second place for my entry. She's been uh, hoping to win first place for five years and she finally did it. When I found out I won this year, my mom and my dad pulled me out of my classroom and they said, we got a call and you won. Your book made it in one of the top three places and I was very excited. The title was called Mirror and it was about a dog named Denny and a boy named Danny. They were both missing a limb from their body and they felt really awkward and they didn't know what they should ever do. And then they found each other and they looked just like each other and they thought, you're perfect for me. So they're always together. The idea came to my head from my neighbor's dog. His name was Diesel and he has three legs. Well, I thought he was really cute and I love dogs. So I wrote a story about a dog. And for Diesel, he has three legs because of a car accident. Well, as a parent, I encourage my kids to um, 
do whatever they can and uh, try to give them as many tools as possible. And this uh, writing is another tool in their arsenal of knowledge. And uh, I believe that it was an opportunity for them to be expressive, uh, to be creative, to actually get their ideas out and understand what it's like to have competition. And, you know, failure, competition, it's good for all kids. It's amazing to see the stories come to life once they've been published in hardback or put into animation. Um, and just the creative process for them is amazing because it's their only limitation is their imagination. Congratulations again, Dylan. You can watch all of the winners read their stories on the Vegas PBS website. That's vegaspbs.org. That does it for this edition of Student Spotlight. If you know of a student or staff member who you think we should spotlight, please let us know. They could end up on this program. Email the Clark County School District's Communications Office at communications at nv.ccsd.net. As we close, we'll share the names of all of the district's National Merit Scholarship semifinalists because they all deserve a shout out. See you next month.